Hey folks, you have one of these useless remotes that come with these dump trailers. Cord's not long enough to really do anything. Can't get to the back, can't get to the truck. Well, rather than spend 150 bucks, I'm gonna show you how to get rid of this and convert your dump trailer to this. Stay tuned. Okay, so here's our hydraulic pump. This is runs the fluid to the cylinder up and down. This is a solenoid that turns the pump on and off. You can see I have the main positive coming in here. This is the control wire, which we're gonna have to connect. So we have to remember white is for the solenoid that runs the pump. These are flow directional valves. So this solenoid kicks on, the flow goes one way, which lifts the dump bed. This solenoid kicks on, the flow goes the opposite way and drops the dump bed. Real simple, real easy. We have to connect this one, which we'll call A, and then we have to run C at the same time because that'll kick on the pump. So we'll do A and C. We'll call this one B, B and C. Simple, very simple. So we have yellow up, brown down, white turns on the solenoid for the pump. Simple. Let's go order some parts. Okay, so let's go on Amazon here. And the first thing we're going to look at is we see the receiver. This is the receiver I bought now. It's $16.99 for a free one day. They have others, and you can look down. There's ones that are a little cheaper, ones that are more expensive. Um, this one's $14.99. It's the same exact receiver. The box that it comes with won't work for us, so we'll order that guy. So let's... See, I ordered it already, so that's purchased. And then let's go for a box. Now, I went for the two junction boxes. These are quite a bit more expensive. Um, you can get the box that it comes with and just uh, tape it up, but I went with the little more expensive box. Also, if you have a battery, you can simply put it inside your battery box. So this is an optional thing. So we'll add $13 to it, uh, to your whole thing. And then I bought these gland connectors. Uh, I bought a whole bag of them. I use them all the time. So I figured what the heck, they're 10 bucks. Um, but you can get a single gland connector for about 45 cents, right around 45 cents at your local hardware store, uh, hardware store, excuse me. So uh, we got them all ordered and let's see you in a couple days and uh, let's go put it together. Okay, so our parts came from Amazon. Here we have our little control panel. And what I did was I taped on a piece of Velcro because I'm gonna be using Velcro to hold it inside the box. We got our little grommet and our little box. These are just little ABS boxes like I showed you online. And we're gonna open that guy up. Oh, my hands aren't in the way, sorry about that. And uh, please excuse my messy workbench. We are in the middle of a move. Okay, now I have another one here, but I want to show you how I made it. So that's this guy here. So the first thing you got to do when you get these little boxes is you'll have to take this cord and you'll have to run it on the inside here. It's pretty easy. And this is for waterproofing. You can see how that goes on there. And it's pretty easy. So it just goes around like that. It'll go all the way around, and that'll give you your waterproof cord. You can see I have it done already on this box. Okay, then once you're finished with that, and I'm gonna put this one back in here. This is the extra box, and I bought two. You don't need to buy two, as I showed you online, uh, because I have another project in mind for this box. So once you do that, you got to drill a hole. I used a step drill. Um, you know, they're pretty cheap. And basically drilled the hole through here so that I could put my lines through. And my system has that plug that I showed you before. It's just a junky plug. Actually, I don't know if I've shown you yet. Nope, I haven't shown you yet. So that's the plug. Uh, goes through to one of these watertight connections. And the way mine is wired, which is interesting enough, the green is the positive, okay? There is no negative, so I had to run a negative into it because the board does take positive and negative. The yellow is the up. 
The brown is the down, and the white is the activate wire for the pump. So to go up, you have to activate the pump, obviously, because it's got to build pressure, and you got to open the solenoid to tell it to go up. So coming down, you don't have to, but I do because it gives it a real tight, uh, when it comes all the way down, it puts pressure in the cylinder on the reverse to give it the strength. And actually, I believe I, I might have just told you that backwards. The yellow one is actually up. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, let's hook this up to the board. The board's pretty simple. So, on your board, you have positive and negative right here. Okay? Because the board needs power, obviously. And then you have all these are the switches. So, this is for A. Even though it says ABC, I know this is for A, B, C, D on your, on your little uh, pad. Now, the way my system works is it needs power to be put to the solenoid on the pump and the solenoid for direction. So you got uh, up and down direction. And I'm pretty sure they're all the same way. Of course, you have to check yours to make sure it's the same. So what I'm gonna do is I know I need power. So I'm gonna put power on the A side of each one of these. So power again was the green. So I'm gonna run green right to the A side, right? I know there's power there. And actually I don't like the little little uh, fitting I have on there. So I want to pull that off, make get a new one. You don't have to put little crimps on there. I have these little crimps that uh, kind of helped a little bit because it's so small and I use some bigger wires. Uh, if I use smaller wire, I think I'd have been fine, but you know what? I just wanted to use enough wire so I had no problems. So I'm going to put these little crimps on real quick. Cheap Chinese tool that doesn't always work. Now these are not actually made for what I'm doing, but I turn them into something that works. Okay, they're on. And the other ones are all there. That's good. And then... Here's my little trick. Excuse my reach. Crimp these flat. Take my little cutter. Cut the ends off. And there you go. I have little flat tabs and these tabs are small enough to fit in here with no problem. So they can go right in. Take a little screwdriver. Crank them down. And they're in. Now, because I need to have power on all of the A's, uh, well, actually only three of the A's, but I am going to put power to all of them, I have to jump those. Now, I had bought these little wires a long time ago. Now, you could just do a little jumper from A to A to A, so you have power across all those A's. But I bought these little cheap wires that are somewhere over here, so, oh, there they are. Little jumper wires. And, you know, they work pretty good for this. So what I did was, or what I'm going to do, is we're gonna wire these guys in. So that A is now bringing power over via a jumper. And if you have a little jumper bar or whatever else, you can use that. And then this A is gonna bring power to here. And then that A will bring power from there over. Tighten those guys down to this A. So on your key remote, key remote, you got A, B, C. So, there we go. Now, what we know is A is my yellow wire. So that's going to hook up to the B terminal on the first connection. I know that sounds confusing, but I'll go over it again in a second. And then our down wire is the brown wire. Down is brown. 
That's going to go on the B of the second relay. These are called relays. This is relay A, B, C, and D. And then my pump needs its power for its solenoid on the last B. Well, not the last, this B here. All right, and we are almost done. So you can see what I did here. This is for button. Oh, we got the keys here. This is button A. When this is depressed, this will open or close. I'm sorry, close the circuit. When this is depressed, this will close this circuit, which puts these two wires together. So it puts A, it puts uh, positive to the positive on the on the solenoid, positive to the positive on the down solenoid, positive to the positive of the pump. Now, so A, I, hit, I would hit A, this one, B, and then C. Now, of course, to run it, you have to have C pushed and the other one pushed at the same time. So you got C and A, that would be going up. C and B, that would be going down. So you do have to use two hands, kind of get a little safety feature. And it's because, like I said before, my pump needs to be activated. And I don't know if yours is different, of course you'll have to check it, but it has to be activated in the up and the down position because you need to run the pump. That's what does the hydraulic pressure. So anyway, next thing I gotta do is just run a little ground wire from here to the negative on the board. All right, and that's it. And that was a very quick wiring job. I mean, it's very easy. And again, so I have the sticky Velcro so I can take it out of here again. And we'll push it down in there. And that's sticking okay. The wires are kind of holding it up a little bit. Anyway, so we'll push it all down in there. And we'll tighten up our watertight grommet. And we'll probably test it without the cover on, so I just make sure everything's working. But we'll put the cover on now. the problem with having a messy workbench you lose screws all right well we're gonna have to steal from the other box well that's a bummer and you know i'll be in the middle of something else and be like oh what is that screw oh that's what that is all right so we tighten these guys down And once that's good and tight, our system is ready to go. I can plug it in, the remote will work fine. And now I have for, like I said, about 20 bucks, a nice little wireless remote. Hey guys, there's something I forgot in the build and I wanna make sure I go over it with you real quick. Right here, you're gonna see there's a jumper. It's a little plastic piece that jumps these three pins, pin one, two, and three together. You want to remove that jumper. When you remove that jumper, it turns these into non-locking relays. We talked before that they're relays. So we want to remove and discard that jumper. Sorry, I forgot. I want to make sure I got that to you. Okay, so all that's left to do is test it out. Let's see how she works. We got our little remote and we hooked up A for up. So we'll type, hit the A and the C. I mean, she'll go a lot higher, but I think you understand. And then we'll do the B and the C to come on down. works pretty good. So I'll have to finish my wiring there, put the box somewhere a little more safe, tighten up some of the wire connections and we're good to go. Okay, to give you some scale, I'm 35 feet away from the trailer. So let's give it a shot. Ah, 
That is not bad, not bad at all. Well, so I hope you learned something on this video. I hope I was clear enough. I know I got a little confusing, but basically that's it. And the range, if I know I'm getting asked about that already, is pretty good. We can walk all the way back behind the trailer, in front of the trailer, about 20 feet away, and it has pretty good range. This was just DIY, this is how I did it. Yours might be completely different, please understand that. And if you like this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd like and subscribe, give me a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. All right, we'll see you next time.